find a basis for the column space of matrix A and a basis for the null space of the transpose of matrix A. Then verify that every vector in the column space of matrix A is orthogonal to every vector in the null space of A transpose. And here we are given the beautiful 4 by 3 matrix A. So the first thing that we want to do here is find a basis for the column space of matrix A. And we can recall that the pivot columns of matrix A form a basis for the column space. So in order to find the basis for the column space, we need to row reduce matrix A augmented with the zero vector to echelon form. So here we go, we have matrix A augmented with the zero vector, which we know is equivalent to the coefficient matrix A. So we have the first column, one, five, zero, negative one, negative one, two, one, minus one, three, one, negative two, one. And starting with our first pivot position, we want to use that pivot to eliminate the entries below it. So we can do negative 5 times the first row plus the second row, and then we can simply add the first row to the fourth row, which leaves us with the equivalent matrix 1, negative 1, 3, negative 5 plus 5 is 0, 5 plus 2 is 7, negative 15 plus 1 is minus 14. The third row remains as it is, 0, 1, negative 2. And 1 minus 1 is 0. Negative 1 minus 1 is minus 2. 3 plus 1 is 4. Beautiful. So our first column is all set. And now we want to go ahead and use our second pivot position to eliminate the entries below it. And again, we're only doing the ones below it because we're just going to echelon 4. So we can do negative one seventh times the second row plus the third row. And then we can do two sevenths times the second row plus the fourth row. Which leaves us with the equivalent matrix one, negative one, three, zero, seven, negative 14. And notice here that these last two rows, the third and fourth row, get canceled out entirely. So we have two rows of zeros. So we realize, hey, this is echelon four. And we can see that we have pivot positions in the first two columns. So we can say that therefore the column space of matrix A is equal to the span of the two column vectors, one, five, zero, negative one, and the column vector, negative 1, 2, 1, minus 1. And remember, we're using the original columns of matrix A. Now, these two vectors in the spanning set form a basis for the column space of matrix A. So the next thing that we need to do is find a basis for the null space of A transpose. And we can recall that to find an explicit description for the null space of A transpose, we need to solve the matrix equation, the transpose of matrix A times vector X equals the zero vector. So in other words, we need to row reduce the transpose of matrix A augmented with the zero vector to row reduced echelon form. Now let's keep matrix A in mind as we find the transpose. And let's make sure that we have enough room for finding this basis. So here we go. We have matrix or the transpose of matrix A augmented with the zero vector. So interchanging the rows and columns of matrix A, the first row of A transpose is one, five, zero, negative one. The second row is negative one, two, one, minus one. And the third row, is 3, 1, minus 2, 1. So we are taking the first pivot and using it to eliminate the entries below it. So we can do the first row plus the second row, and then we could do minus 3 times the first row plus the third row, which produces the equivalent matrix 1, 5, 0, negative 1, 
we have 1 minus 1 is 0, 5 plus 2 is 7, 0 plus 1 is 1, and negative 1 minus 1 is minus 2. We then have negative 3 plus 3 is 0, negative 15 plus 1 is minus 14, 0 minus 2 is minus 2, and then positive 3 plus 1 is 4. So our first column is all set. And we move to our second pivot position, which we want to use to eliminate the entries above and below it. And we actually also want to reduce that second row. So let's see. We could do negative 5 sevenths times the second row plus the first row. We could do a scalar multiple of 1 seventh times the second row. And then we could do 2 times the second row plus the third row. Which leaves us with the equivalent matrix. So the first row becomes 1, 0, negative 5 sevenths, positive 3 sevenths. The second row becomes 0, 1, 1 seventh minus two sevenths, and the third row gets eliminated entirely. Woohoo! And would you look at this? We have a row reduced echelon form, and this is letting us know that x sub one is equal to positive five sevenths times x sub three minus three sevenths times x sub four, that x sub two is equal to negative one seventh times x sub three, plus 2 sevenths times x sub 4, and that x sub 3 and x sub 4 are free variables. So we can take this solution and write it in the parametric vector form. So we have vector x, which is a vector in R4. So I have x sub 1, x sub 2, x sub 3, and x sub 4. And this is such that we've seen that x sub 1 is defined as 5 sevenths times x sub 3 minus 3 sevenths times x sub 4. That x sub 2 is equal to negative 1 seventh times x sub 3 plus 2 sevenths times x sub 4. x sub 3 is a free variable, so it's just itself. And x sub 4 is a free variable, so it is also just itself. And decomposing this, we have the scalar multiple x sub 3 multiplied by the vector 5 sevenths, negative 1 seventh, 1, 0. And this is plus x sub 4 multiplied by the vector negative 3 sevenths, 2 sevenths, 0, 1. And we are officially ready to conclude that therefore the null space of a transpose is equal to this set spanned by the two vectors. So our first vector is 5 sevenths, negative 1 seventh, 1, 0. And our second vector is minus 3 sevenths, 2 sevenths, 0, 1. And so the two vectors in this spanning set form a basis for the null space of A transpose. So now that we have the nulls, a basis for the null space of A transpose, as well as a basis for the column space of matrix A, we are officially ready to verify that each vector in the column space of A is orthogonal to each vector in the null space of A transpose. So in other words, we need to show that each pair of distinct vectors, that their dot product is equal to zero. So I'm gonna go ahead and let the vectors in the basis for the null space of A transpose be vector u sub one and vector u sub two. And then I'll let the basis vectors in the column space of matrix A be vectors v sub one and vector v sub two. So we have four dot products that we need to verify here. So case one, we are taking the dot product of vector u sub 1 with vector v sub 1. So we have vector u sub 1, which is 5 sevenths, negative 1 seventh, 1, 0. 
And we are dotting this with the vector in the column space of matrix A, 1, 5, 0, negative 1. So computing this dot product, we have 5 sevenths minus 5 sevenths plus 0 plus 0, which equals 0. So case 2, let's compute the dot product of vector u sub 1 with vector v sub 2. So we have that same first column vector, 5 sevenths, negative 1 seventh, 1 0. And we are dotting this with the second vector in the column space, negative 1, 2, 1, minus 1. So computing this dot product, we have negative 5 sevenths, minus 2 sevenths, plus 1, plus 0, which equals 0. So moving on to case 3, here we are taking the dot product of vector u sub 2 with vector v sub 1. So vector u sub 2 has the components negative 3 sevenths, 2 sevenths, 0, 1. And we are dotting this with the first vector in the column space, 1, 5, 0, negative 1. So computing this dot product, we have minus 3 sevenths plus 10 sevenths plus 0 minus 1, which again gives us 0. Woohoo! So we have one more case to go here. In case 4, we need to compute the dot product of vector u sub 2 with vector v sub 2. So vector u sub 2 has the components negative 3 sevenths, 2 sevenths, 0, 1. And we are dotting this with the vector negative 1, 2, 1, minus 1. So computing our dot product, we have positive 3 sevenths plus 4 sevenths plus 0 minus 1, which gives us 0. Woohoo! So we have officially verified that every vector in the column space of matrix A is orthogonal to each vector in the null space of A transpose by showing that each one of these dot products is zero, making this our beautiful final answer.